In the Department of Chemistry at Glasgow's historic University of Strathclyde, Professor Duncan Graham has assembled a team of experts in fields including spectroscopy, physics, and biology in order to advance research on the fundamental concepts of cells in our bodies. What we're trying to do is look inside the body and understand what's going on behind the exterior facing. The smaller you can go, the more detail you can get out of, say, things like protein interactions. By creating nanopatterns of proteins and being able to study them, we can uh, try to understand different protein interactions. The nanoscale research they're conducting in the Center for Molecular Nanometrology is opening new doors to understanding the fundamental units of human life, small science with potentially enormous benefits. They all have their own individual projects and they're all working together towards the common thrust. Yeah, we work very well in trying to encourage collaboration. Dr. Graham and his students don't only help each other, they also partner with outside companies like NanoInc. NanoInc as a company are always interested in new products which are reliant on their technology. Knowing that a company is interested in your work um, gives you more motivation to see, ah, this does have a place. We are doing research which has the potential to become significant new product lines for them. The two groups share information and technical notes that improve both the research process and the actual dip pen nanolithography tools. We've had both Aaron and Eleanor go and spend quite a lot of time in NanoInc. They have really advanced um, facilities. They have a, a, a huge variety of expertise. We can be working on a particular aspect, say in the stem cell project here. There can be a particular aspect of the stem cell project being worked on in NanoInc. And when we get together, we realize that combining those two aspects of the work suddenly takes us in a whole new direction. Our bodies are composed of a complex mixture of many types of cells, such as skin, muscle, and bone cells. Because stem cells can either become or replace these many different cell types, they have huge medical potential. What we're trying to do is understand how we can control what tells the stem cell to differentiate to those particular types of cell. At the moment, uh, we can grow stem cells in the lab, but it's very hard to control the way they, they differentiate. Being able to take them and control the way that these cells will change would be a huge breakthrough. By building nanoscale molecular codes, scientists can encourage the stem cells to develop into specific types. But to write these codes, researchers need a tool capable of controlling materials on the nanoscale level. To build the topography with different chemical functionality is very difficult by any other way than DPN. We can use DPN to create a nanopattern with a specific chemical composition. We can then take cells and grow them on this substrate and really depending on the type of chemical pattern we've created, we can tell the cell to become a certain type of cell of interest. DPN can print sort of sub 500 nanometer spots. So we'll take a, a tip which is really, a really almost like a small fountain pen and dip it or coat the tip with a chemical of interest. DPN is considered a soft lithography technique, which um, means we can use you know, nice mild conditions that proteins are comfortable in. There are other methods which can do it, but to do it routinely and over a large area, DPN really is the only alternative. In the long run, Aaron's work with stem cells may open the door to treatments for many of our most deadly illnesses. In separate but equally promising research, Eleanor is working to develop new detection technologies for diseases like prostate cancer. So Eleanor's research is really trying to produce uh, technology which will allow much faster and more sensitive detection of the prostate specific antigen. It's a protein that's um, often used as a, a way of detecting if a male has um, prostate cancer. And part of the problem is accurate and early diagnosis of A, the disease, but also B, how effective any surgery has been when surgery has been employed to remove the offending prostate. Using NanoInc's Inscriptor and NLP2000 systems, she is able to easily create nanoscale arrays of proteins that when exposed to human samples can indicate when minute quantities of certain biomarker proteins like PSA are present. The NLP provides us with a faster method for producing these arrays very efficient, it's very user friendly. The NLP does not contain an integrated atomic force microscope, so it can move freely and quickly to create nano patterns over large areas. There are many other disease states that can be detected in this manner. This could really push forward diagnostic procedures and let us sort of pinpoint 
what's wrong with the patient quicker than uh, we've ever been able to do before. So something that we've started working on now and is a real thrust of our research is to try and take the chemistry from the bench into the body or from the test tube to the cell. By using new tools like DPN systems to work on a nanoscale, scientists can better understand our basic building blocks. There could be huge impacts if um, the research keeps continuing the sort of way it is. It's quite exciting and uh, quite a dynamic environment. It's quite a responsibility to think that the work that you do can make a difference to people's lives.